Yeah, failure in uh, contemporary terms, like, um, well, I, I guess, so things like addiction, uh, alcoholism, divorce, bankruptcy, uh, and then failed business ventures or failed careers. You could call them failure, mm -hmm. but you know, looking back, they all, they were all uh, contributing to what I do now. They were all really uh, amazing learning experiences. Mm -hmm. Now the trick is, uh, how soon do you want to see that when you're experiencing failure, uh, that, that this is good for you? That, I love that question. That's so great. I love that a lot. I haven't heard a heart articulated like that. I'm totally stealing that. I love, love, love that. Most of us never learned how to train our brains, which is why most of us needlessly settle, struggle, and worse, suffer. My name is Chris Doris, and I want to make brain training mainstream. This is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. You're looking at one pumped homeboy over here. I am super duper excited <clears throat> about our Tough Talks guest today because he's one of my favorite people in the world and he has uh, helped me transform um, as powerfully as anybody a and more powerfully than anybody in my history, specifically with respect to building my practice and building a lucrative, um, thriving coaching and speaking practice. Uh, there's nobody that's taught me more than, than him. And, you know, you don't need to be a coach or a speaker to glean value from what we're about to um, experience because, you know, Steve Chandler huh, is just a gift to the planet. And um, so let me tell you a little bit about him from his bio on his website, which is stevechandler.com. So... Uh, <clears throat> Drawing on Steve's more than 20 years of working with professionals to dramatically improve their success, the mind shift that he offers frees people from unnecessary pessimism. <laughs> I love that. Unnecessary pessimism. And puts them back in touch with the source of their enthusiasm for work and life. Although Steve graduated from the University of Arizona with a degree in creative writing and political science and spent four years in the military studying language and psychological warfare, which I have never talked to him about. And I really hope that we'll get to it. I will make a point of, of getting to that to see what, like, what is that? What's that about? It's so interesting to me. And I'm surprised I've known him for so many years, well over a decade and I, <clears throat> maybe 20 years and I've never asked him about it. Anyway, psychological warfare. <clears throat> he credits his own life experiences with failure I'm going to ask him about that too, as the most valuable tools for helping others. He, he's like, one, one, he may be the most humble dude that I know. And he's also one of the funniest dudes that I know. And he uses humble humor to make some really powerful points. One of my famous uh, favorite things about, about him is that you're guaranteed to laugh. I, that's a fact. <laughs> I'm calling that right now. I'm not going out on a limb there either. So uh, Steve's audiences are inspired by stories of his low points. He gives them hope because they realize that, that they're not nearly as bad off as he was. And they figure if Steve can transform his life, so can they. So he's the author of probably close to 40 books, somewhere in the vicinity of, four, not probably, in the vicinity of 40 books that have been translated into over 25 languages, which is amazing. He's so prolific and his stuff is so good. Uh, so he's so his personal success coaching, public speaking, and business consulting have been used by CEOs, top professionals, major universities, and over 30 Fortune 500 companies. He's won all kinds of awards, been on all kinds of TV and talk radio shows. He's he's a, he's just an amazing human being who uh, has great stories and and, and um, has really taught me that my bank account is a direct reflection. My bank account balance is the direct reflection of my level of service, which is beautiful. And he is a true servant. You're going to love this. I know it. So uh, let's go find him. He's here somewhere. Let's not keep him waiting. Here he is. The man. The. The. Godfather. Why, why do you shake your head like that? Well, it's kind of a funny 
title, right? I mean, I, yeah. Uh, but what's the story? I don't even know the story behind that. Well, I think you can guess. I uh, think I can. Mr. Hardison, mm -hmm. uh, he proclaimed it at one point and then asked me if I was willing to live into it. <laughs> And uh, that was many years ago, and I said, uh, why not? You know, I'm not about personal branding, but I don't, I never use it. Uh, a lot of people have um, heard it as the grandfather of coaching, oh. which is more appropriate, more age appropriate uh, name. But anyway, I have coached a long time. Let's just put it that way. You know, you got a new look going, and I'm digging it. Yeah. Now, I don't know if like you're just trying to mimic me or what's I, going I on. Am in, I am inspired by you in right. many ways. Maybe I should, and, maybe I should uh, do this. Now we're, like, now we're like twinsies. Yeah. That's a little too much. No, but I like it. Looks good. Thank you. You look great. <clears throat> you're working out, aren't you? Oh, oh I, my question frozen. <laughs> frozen. No, it's actually I've not got a lot of projects ahead, so uh, good health is important and strength. I love that. Ah, well, well, nice segue there. You're still, you know, um, can you hear me all right? So this happens often. Like Steve has me on. Wow. Well, that's that's an interesting circumstance. I think when you went like that. Yeah, maybe that's what happens. So, you know, this happens to us. We've had this happen before. Remember, you were interviewing me one time, and I just went away. I think I was on a cordless phone. This is a long time ago. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember and, that. And, and, and I love the way you handled it, which was, see, we like to work with these things. So one of my favorite mantras, right, is that every set of circumstances can be leveraged for gain if viewed masterfully. In other words, we can create from anything, from any moment. We, we can right. create from, right? The creator. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So we can create from this. So this is us utilizing the technological experience right now that we just had, which is not a problem. It's just a situation. And That's here right. we are responding to it with grace. Beautiful. <laughs> so uh, when people ask you, you know, somebody you just meet for the first time and they say, oh, hi, Steve, it's very nice to meet you. In the, in the off chance that they don't already happen to know who you are, and they say, what do you do? How do you answer these days? Um, you know, it depends, because uh, if I'm in the middle of doing a lot of writing, working on a book, mm -hmm. not doing much coaching, mm -hmm. I might just impulsively say, um, I write books, and make recordings and um right now i'm working on a book so i might say that i might i might say i'm a coach if you're um, if you're if you're in the writing phase and, and you say that i'm an author then the follow-up question that they might ask is oh really what do you write on yeah so that's a tough one you know because uh, i've written books about baseball jane austen moby dick i wrote a book about obituaries <laughs> So if I start saying if That's I great. start saying that, it's like the people back away. Like, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I am. Right, but so, you know, sometimes I say business. You know, it depends. Um, now, if I'm in a a situation where I'm looking for clients or I'm in a business situation, I I would respond with what would be most interesting to the person. So. Mm -hmm. I've written books on sales, books on business. If I'm talking to a businessman, I might say, written a number of books on small business, leadership, and sales. And they say, oh, so gotcha. chameleon, chameleon. Well, how many books have you written to the, at this point? How many books have you written this week? Uh, <laughs> uh, zero this week. What? I think the... Total is somewhere over 30, maybe 40, but some of those are co-written, about uh, a fourth of them are co-written, so that, um, you know what it is? Oh, so right? only really 30. Yeah, right. But what it is, it, there's an element to it of, um, was it Einstein who said, 
insanity is doing the same thing over and over, hoping for a different result. Yeah. Um, so, so it's not, who knows how admirable that really is. When you <laughs> so one of the things I love about you is your, your, uh, your humble humor. You use, well, that actually reminds me, there's something in your, in your bio that I wanted to ask you about. And, and the, well, I don't know, yes, in your bio, in your about Steve um, page on your, on your website. And it says something like, your most valuable tools for helping others uh, are your life experiences with failure. Yes. Talk about that. Yeah, Fa you know, failure. You, mm -hmm. you know, when I talk to you, uh, I don't have to explain a lot about um, using breakdown, uh, working with what looks like a problem, and just working with it, using it. Uh, I once gave a talk with a group, and the, the power went out in the building. Mm, wow. And uh, I just kept talking mm -hmm. as, as if I didn't notice anything. <laughs> And they thought it was hilarious, but I, you know, why stop what we're doing just because of a little detail here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, failure, yeah, failure in uh, contemporary terms, like, um, well, I, I guess, so things like addiction, uh, alcoholism, divorce, bankruptcy, uh, and then failed business ventures or failed careers. You could call them failure, mm -hmm. but you know, looking back, they all, they were all uh, contributing to what I do now. They were all really uh, amazing learning experiences. Mm -hmm. Now the trick is, uh, how soon do you want to see that when you're experiencing failure, uh, that, that this is good for you? I love that question. That's so great. I love that a lot. I haven't heard a heart articulated like that. I'm totally stealing that. I love, love, love that. <clears throat> because one of the things that you and I both t totally agree on is uh, the absurdity of, of waiting unnecessarily. So the question is, how soon, <clears throat> how soon do you want to see that this adversity can be enzymatic or yeah, utilized? Yeah. Right. Yeah. How soon? I love the way you're phrasing it. How soon do you want to? God, I'm, I, I can't wait to ask my next coaching client a question when they're having a, a, a problem. So, well, how soon do you want to see that this is actually working for you? Yes. How soon? Because you know, people say, looking back, it was a horrible event, and I was depressed about it for months. But looking back, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Now, how, how far back do I want to look to wake up to things being the best thing that ever happened to me? I want to close that time period. Like today, when I first uh, started talking to you, I said, how are you doing? And you said, this is the best day ever. So first, my first thought is I'm flattering myself and saying, oh, well, thank you. Uh, but I really realized that you would say that any day uh, because you are in touch with your power to create context for what you're living in. And um, a lot of people aren't. Most can, can you people, elaborate upon that? Like assume okay, that I have so, no idea what that even means. Okay, so the creating the context for my day. Mm. So let's say um, I've got... Um, I've got some sales work to do, or I'm trying to fill a group, and um, I lapse into the context of, oh, this is drudgery, this is a grind, I'm not looking forward to it. Now, um, what I want to be aware of, that's a context for this activity that I created in, in, yes. my, own, in my own divine, unlimited creativity. Mm. So... I want to step back and be aware of the creativity to be able to say, what context would I like to hold this activity in? So it might be joy. I want to have it be joyful, lighthearted, fun, a way to create relationships, whether they join my group or not. 
uh, give them something to smile at, send them something of value. Mm. And uh, so now I've altered the context of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean. Yeah, that's great. You know, something that I have always wondered about and never asked you about, and I don't know that I've ever even heard you speak too much about it, maybe a little bit in, in some of your workshops or your talks, <clears throat> is that you know you were in the service what what branch of the service did you serve in uh army i knew that that i did though and but you uh, studied are you practiced or studied i was in psychological warfare which is fascinating to me can you talk a little bit about that yeah it was fascinating to me so uh we went through um this process where they you take these tests, aptitude, things like that. And then they, they give you a printout card. Back in the days, you know, when you computers would kick out, don't fold, spindle, or mutilate this card. Yeah. And at the top of my card, they handed to me after this battery of tests, it said, at the top it said, psycho. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, of course it did. I thought these guys are good. <laughs> they are on to me right away. Uh, I wonder what they're, where they're going to put me. But it really, it was, it was an abbreviation for psychological warfare. Mm. Now, since that time, they've changed the name to uh, PSYOPs, Psychological Operations, uh, because it was a little too harsh and... Uh, we had to deal with um, this, the snowflakes who are now enlisting in the army and they may have been triggered by the word warfare unnecessarily. So uh, it was called psychological operations. That's what it was. But what is it? Well, it's um, working with um, Interacting with the mind of the enemy. Mm. So, so it in, includes all wow. forms of interrogation. Wow. It includes the um, <clears throat> flying a helicopter over East Berlin and dropping leaflets about free enterprise and democracy. Oh, wow. Uh, all, wow. Kinds of, all kinds of communication. Uh, with people who, in, in the in the context of the military, are considered either opponents or potential enemies of our country. Hmm. So it's uh, that's what it is. So uh, you know, I, I've you have coached me uh, on more than one occasion. <clears throat> Did you ever use any of those tactics uh, on me? Yes, me? But, but I didn't reveal them to you hmm. at the time. Because they they are so subtle and masterful that they fly in under the radar. They alter the mindset of your client without them even knowing. You know, uh, joking aside, <clears throat> we do as coaches manipulate. Well, don't let me put words in your mouth. Let me put that into a question form. Do you think that you ever manipulate your clients? Well, yes, because. If you play the piano, mm. you're going to manipulate the keys mm. to get a, a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. If I open a, uh, the blind to let the light in, I'm manipulating the blind. I'm pulling the strings. The, so that's a manipulation, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is manipulation in that definition in that we open windows, we open... Mm. Oh, wow. We let the light in to show the client what's already there in them. So it's not trickery, like, right. you know, sales manipulation, bait and switch. Right, not manipulating to get, <clears throat> manipulating right. to serve. That's right. That's right. With, with full uh, permission and participation yeah. of the client. Yeah. So it kind of takes that negative definition of manipulation right. away. Right. So what are the intentions for even having this Tough Talks um, blog, video blog slash podcast series <clears throat> is that it's a way 
for me to use technology to accomplish one of my missions, which is to, to share with as many people in the world as I can, <clears throat> the fact that A, there's stuff you can do to strengthen the way that you use your mind. Um, B, that, well, actually A, that your life unfolds according to the way that you think. B, there's stuff you can do to strengthen the way that you think. And then C, like what? So um, a question I have for you is what are some stuff what are some things that you do, some practical things? Because that, that's what I really love for people who listen and watch to take away and go, oh, I got a thing. I got a thing now. I, I want to go do, that was a cool conversation, but I got a thing that I can go integrate into my life and have it be better, have me be stronger. What are some things that you do? <clears throat> and this could take up the rest of our whole conversation, which I'd be perfectly fine with. Um, what are the things that you do in order to strengthen your mind? Well, as you know, coaching comes out of the world of sports. It's not psychology, although it contains, the good coaching contains the best elements from psychology and spirituality. But, um, so people in the world of sports, they, um, they, they move their game and their skills forward out of being inspired by other players. So you, any athlete you interview, and I know you've worked, you've coached athletes, they, they're quick to say who inspires them or whose game they learned from. They're mm -hmm. copying and, they're, and they don't feel like uh, they're copying, plagiarizing. It's part of the game is to uh, use that. Same with musicians. Mm -hmm. If I ask uh, Keith Richard who his influences are, mm -hmm. and he, he freely says, I, I copied uh, certain guitar styles from Muddy Waters, from John Lee Hooker, and, uh, and so it's not considered uh, copying, but um, so, so my central thing, my thing, what I do, is what I call deliberate inspiration. So most people wait around to be inspired. They go to a movie and they get really inspired. Or they, someone hands them a book uh, and they really get lit up. Or they watch a YouTube or they watch one of your videos, you know, your Tough Talks, and, and you've had so many great ones. And they think, oh man, I'm inspired. But it's, it's all kind of accidental. You know, it's all kind of hit and miss. So my thing is uh, I want to be systematically inspired. So, so I want to have what you're saying is you, instead of waiting for something yeah. outside of you to occur <clears throat> to give you inspiration, you want to preemptively create it. That's right. So you are <clears throat> inspiring yourself. That's right. Uh, why okay. wait? Th this is uh, huge. Why wait? You know, why, why wait? Why wait? Waiting is the, when people ask, well, the number one mistake that I've witnessed people making in my entire professional career, starting from social work up till now, is waiting unnecessarily. Yeah. Putting, uh, you talk about this all the time. <clears throat> in fact, you just, you were writing about it. I don't know if it was an excerpt from your right now book, but yesterday, the email that came out for the creator group, which we will talk about. Um, uh, it was talking all about that unnecessary waiting. Yeah, yeah, that's so, it. So, so let's get back to this. I'll talk more about deliberate inspiration. So, how do? You, what are some ways that you? In, well, how do you create? How do you inspire yourself? Okay, so I have a morning ritual. Okay, can you tell so, us what it is? So now I used to not have that. So uh -huh. I used to just wake up, check email, read the news, um, and so I would wake up into stress problem solving, um, nervousness, uh, overwhelm. And, and I thought, hang on, uh, I don't have to do that. So I want to begin my day inspired. Mm -hmm. So okay. there are tons of things over the years that have inspired me. Certain TED Talks, certain movies, uh, books. I've got books that um, I read five years ago that were inspirational. Well, I, so, so I have that in front of me. What inspires me? 
And so I wake up in the morning and a certain book I'm reading that's very inspiring to me, um, I'll read passages. If there is a coach or teacher, um, I don't know, did you get the video of Kobe Bryant talking Oh, yeah, about you said it to me, yeah. Yeah, so that's super... Or Devin, you and Devin both sent it to me. Devin yeah. Bandison. No, yeah, right. Devin Bandison sent it to you, and you sent it to me. That's right. So super inspiring to me, right? Yeah, totally. So, so now I watch it, I'm inspired, but I also save it in my um, inspired file because... That's it. Ins there, there's a thing. Everybody listen thing. to that. <clears throat> All right, slow down for a second. Uh, let's do that. There's a, there's a mic drop moment. That's a takeaway, right? And it's, you have an inspired file. Everyone listening, start an inspirational file. Fill That's it. right. That's right. And it can be spiritual. It can be psychological. It can be sports or the arts, whatever. Now, here's the thing that I realized years ago, and I came up with a phrase uh, for my coaching school, and it's called once for information, twice for transformation. So if I'm reading a book that inspires me, okay, so let's just say I'm grabbing the book I was reading this morning, okay? Atomic Habits, Habits by James Clear? Yeah. Okay. So very inspirational. Now, um, I read it once, I've got the information, right? It, it lands in the mind, I get insights, wow, this is... but. When I read it a second time, I know you've had this experience. I, everybody I know has. They read something a second time, and it's like, I never saw that in there right. before, or it's landing in a different place. Mm -hmm. So the Kobe Bryant video, and maybe you can share it uh, with your people so totally. they can watch it you know, yep. along, <clears throat> along with this. It'll be yep. better than yep. anything I'm going to say. No, not true. It's already but, not true. So, so I watch it. I'm inspired. But now I put it in the inspired file because six months from now, when, I'm, when I look in the file and pull something out that I haven't seen in a while, um, it hits me just as hard, you know. It, it, and, and usually it hits even harder the second time because I'm different, I'm more open. Uh, there's been evolution in my mind over time and I'm seeing it even differently. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's the thing I do these days that's made a yeah. huge difference in my life. Deliberate inspiration, start my day mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. an inspired place. That's like a pregame, <clears throat> so in sports, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, like, it's like, what are you doing before the game? to get your head into the perfect state for performance to crush. Yeah, yeah. And that's, so you're, you're getting the serotonin, the dopamine, maybe even the oxytocin flowing, all the chemicals that are on switches for all intelligence center of the brains, maximizing the probability of being a badass that day. A couple weekends ago, go ahead, say it. Okay, so, but it can also be, um, I might be overdoing the badass thing for, in my life, you know, pushing too hard, mm. coming from the ego, trying to force things to happen. So my inspiration might be um, learning relaxation, learning um, learning more mind, more mindfulness, a more spiritual approach to a relationship I have that's getting edgy. Yeah. So inspiration doesn't have to be high octane motivation i know that's kind of what what your whole thing is about but no no it isn't it's that's okay. part of it and i'm really glad no that it's not my, like that's a piece of it right <clears throat> and yeah. i'm really glad this is one of the things i love most about you you're so quick it's so sharp that you like you're like yes and there's this side too which is it's not all about <clears throat> like offensive line I mean, grunt come on yeah you know, like tony robbins Woo! it's not all, and he by the way is not all that either just not anymore. Himself. Yeah, right. He's like a deep dude. He studied the same place I did in India at the Oneness University. He's a, he's a deep homeboy. But, uh, yeah, but you're right. 
so when I say, this is a very important clarification point, so thanks for slowing it down enough to make it, because this is another valuable takeaway for folks listening and watching, is that when I say badass, what I want to be clear, and I will elaborate, I will, I will um, I'll make this distinction moving forward, that what that means is whatever that, whatever you want that to mean. Yeah. Right? It's like your badassery is what, however you want, what is like, what are you? Who are you as a badass? And you could be, I am in a pure state of serenity. That's my badassness. Roger that. So I am, so what you're talking about is a pre game or a morning ritual that maximizes the probability of you being who you want to be that day and yeah, how you want right. to be and, and right. being the creator that you're designed to be. Well said. <clears throat> A couple of weeks ago, I attended one of the things that I do, right, to strengthen my mind is I attend cool events. Like these are bands; these are admission bands for the last two. This one, this one was Istanbul, Turkey. I was over in Istanbul a few weeks or a month or so ago doing a Mind Valley event, and this one was the admission band for the one I was at in LA a couple week a couple weekends ago called Summit. And see, because I thought those. Uh, were from nightclubs you've been to them last week. No, I keep those on the right hand. All right, all right, all right. Go ahead. <laughs> this is my my deep personal investment, and this is my party arm. So obviously, I'm out of balance right now. Yeah, <laughs> I better get partying. <laughs> I gotta stay balanced. So one of the presenters, in fact, the final presenter of the four day event, was a guy named Louis Schwartzberg. You know who he is? No. Any chance? Okay, you will. Uh, one of the uh, ingredients of my inspiration file is uh, one of his videos. He's, he's an award-winning short film creator. But, but the, 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 the common denominator or thread through all of his material, everything he puts out is beauty. Beauty of life, beauty of humans, beauty of nature, beauty. Like he creates these, these films that move you to tears. Mm. it's beautiful <clears throat> I was so excited that he was going to be speaking and it was at 930 on the last night and there are already parties closing parties going on and I'm a, like front and center sitting there because there's a video and I'll put the link to this one in as well as the Kobe one and it's called gratitude HD so if you go to YouTube and you just Google or you just search gratitude HD it will come up it's six minutes long and if you don't get a little bit choked up you might want to go to the doctor <laughs> because I've, I use this in all my coaching. I use it in all my speaking it, it because what it, what he So he has this guy, this Benedictine monk from Austria named Dr. Or Dr. Brother David Steindelrast, who has like the coolest voice in the world narrates this spectacular um, set of images from all over the world of, of like nature and people. And, and, and the whole theme of course is that gratitude is available to us in every moment. There's no moment of our lives where we do not have access to gratitude, which is one of the highest states that we can choose to, to ex choose to experience. So I use it all the time in my, in talks and, and uh, you know, talking about state and gratitude being one of the most intelligent states to, to choose to create or think your way into. Afterwards, <clears throat> after he was done speaking, uh, I, I ran up. I want to be the first person to have a chance to talk to him. And, and I said to him, brother, I love you, man. And he, just, he said, we've never met. He goes, I love you too. It was so beautiful. We hugged it out. And, um, and I told him how much I, you know, I use uh, his content. So uh, it is so beautiful. I'm going to send it to you separately. <clears throat> Uh, Thank you. You're going to love it. Sends to Steve. And I'll put it also the link for that. So that, I love that. So an inspiration file. Are there other things? That's a thing. That could be the biggest thing or might be it's the thing. It's not the thing for you. I know more about you to know that's not the only thing. What else? What's something else that you do to, to fortify yourself, to grow? Um, I always want to hold in mind who's doing what I do at a much higher level. So, um, I love that. And I want to deliberately stay, stay connected to that person. So if I'm writing a book, for example, 
I find people who write with power and with beauty, people whose writing I really admire. And I immerse myself in their writing while I'm writing. So, so that that calls mm. me, that calls me forward. Or if I'm um, about to give a keynote talk or I'm teaching um, at the coaching school or some other event, I find uh, um, in my file of great teachers, people who give beautiful speeches and, and ways that I admire the way they do it, um, I will watch those. And um, so, so I always want to have Hmm. Where's where's the higher version of what I do that um, I can uh, channel? So hmm. what I, what I find in our work, Chris, is a lot of people who do what you and I do: teach, speak, coach. Um, they compare themselves instead of channeling. So. Oh, that's a huge distinction. That is so yes. great. Comparing versus channeling. Exactly. Wow. That's cool. It's one of my, you know, I, I love to do opposites. Uh, my, my crazy good book is, is about op choices of opposites. That's my favorite of all of your books. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's a book of choices that people don't know they have. So I, I could compare, and most, most people in our work, They'll see a great speaker or they'll get coached by a great coach and they think, that's not me. I can't do that. Uh, that just, that reminds me of um, what I can't do. But people in sports and the arts, they see something, they know it's above what they can do, but they love it because they think, man, I, I'm going to incorporate mm. yeah. whatever I can my, yeah. and do my version of that. Mm. I'm going to channel that person when I'm writing. Uh, hmm. I, I wrote a detective novel uh, a number of years ago. And um, so, so all during the time of writing that, I was reading my favorite detective novel writers, knowing they mastered uh, the genre. They were amazing. Their dialogue, their plots, but um, it, it was it was uh, being channeled. You know, it was like I was being influenced in a favorable way. So I want there to be people who do stuff better than I do. And and fortunately, mm -hmm. knowing me, there's a, a wide range of that to choose from. Uh, I don't have to go very far, but uh, I love that. So, mm -hmm. so loving, loving that someone's better than you as yes. you do it, is the, a different context. We talked about that at the start, that people don't know context can be created. They believe context is pre-existent. So yeah. mm -hmm. like I'm going, they say, I'm going through a bitter divorce. And so they've heard all divorces are bitter and hard and difficult and mm -hmm. awful. And they, and so they just assume uh, it's a divorce, so it has to be bitter. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, and I had a client going through and I said, do you want it to be? Because you're creating it as that. Mm -hmm. How would you like it to be compassionate, <coughs> uh, collaborative, uh, honoring of each person? I'm going to play devil's advocate, right? So, yeah. um, so I'm going to be that client who's not getting it. Uh, fine. All right. Like I, get, I think I get what you're saying. I, I, I will do my best to be collaborative, but she's out of her mind. She just wants to just, just stab me in the back. How, how's it going to be collaborative? Well, uh, first of all, I recommend uh, dropping your story about her and giving her half a chance. Stop labeling, um, be open, see if you can listen with understanding. Put her reality glasses on. You know these reality glasses that, that you put on and you're now in the jungle? Jurassic yeah, virtual Park. reality, yeah. So, so um, she sees the world her way. 
And uh, given how she sees the world, she's going to say what she's going to say. And she's going to do what she's going to do. Um, not because it's right or wrong, but because she sees things that way. So the more understanding you have of how the mind works, uh, how people live in different realities in many ways, uh, the more chance you have of having it be uh, friendly, collaborative, honoring the other person. And, and the more I'm open to that, I don't have to uh, require that she behave a certain way mm -hmm. for me to be more compassionate. Wow, right on. <clears throat> yeah, right. So, okay, so enough of that role play. That, that was cool. Uh, the point, though, that we're in <clears throat> is loving that there are people better than you. Yeah. And the context that you can create around that is, is what I call the divinely selfish one meaning that it, it's the selfish of good nature, which is everyone benefits from it because it's, uh, it's like you prioritizing yourself. And so you're utilizing the fact that there are people that are better than you at certain things, at your craft perhaps. And thank God for that because that's one of the most powerful ways I get to then learn. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. As opposed to the conditioned uh, view or context, which is like, oh, I'm not as good as them. Right. I yeah, don't have yeah. that. Yeah. So if I, um... so it's like <clears throat> acknowledge. So this is actually really to, to take it a little deeper. One of the things I learned from Deepak Chopra, who's one of my favorites, right? Who, who I um, study and, and mimic. And, and by the way, so are you, FYI. I channel you constantly, FYI. Um, there's a Sanskrit term called tat tvamasi, which translated means that thou are, or I am that, right? And the practice is, is that when I'm out in the world <clears throat> and someone, anyone, strangers, anyone influences me, or I have a response to something that they've said or done that's either inspired or <clears throat> um, that I'm, if I'm turned off, in either case, I want to recite, I am that, that is me. And so what I'm doing is I'm practicing seeing the sameness in us as opposed to the difference in us. And I'm here, I'm reminded of that as I listen to you right now, in um, the tool that you're describing that you use is to study with gratitude and curiosity and enthusiasm people who are doing stuff that you care about better than you. That's it. Right, by practicing seeing, well, we're the same. So let me just mimic that. Let me learn from this person who's, who, you know, I'm connected to fundamentally, right? And, yeah. and learn and take, and take from them. That's, that's really powerful. Channeling versus comparing. That's oh, it. Beautiful. Now, and that's, that's open to everybody. That's not <clears throat> some unique part of my identity that that's a practice that's open to everyone and if it doesn't come easily if you have a an entire life of um having compared yourself unfavorably your older brother was a better athlete your and um a new path can be channeling but it takes practice because the old conditioning will always rise up first well, that is a huge point <clears throat> that needs to be made over and over, is that all of this is practice. Yeah. It is not identity. So in my clients, the one obstacle to uh, a new path, more success, anything they want to create that hasn't been there before, the biggest obstacle is identity, is believing mm. that I do what I do, my weaknesses, my um, lines of development that are underdeveloped because of who I am, because of my permanent hardwired personality or identity. Mm -hmm. And so people believe that their behavior flows from there and is caused by their identity. That's mm -hmm. just the way I am. <laughs> And they've had feedback on that all their lives. You know, our parents say you're lazy or you never did this or you don't like 
uh, you never finish anything or uh, you're not good with people. You're not the friendliest person in the world, you know. So <laughs> we hear all throughout our lives that behavior flows from your identity, your permanent personality. So no wonder we believe that. When you're programmed, you're going to believe that. But the, the real breakthroughs for people is to wake up to the fact that that's not true at all. It's all practice. So if you've not been compassionate to family members, uh, you're out of practice. That's it. That's, that's all it, it is. Mm -hmm. I do a thing in a group uh, where I throw somebody a basketball and I say, uh, bounce the ball. I used to say dribble, but I get a lot of uh, people from England and they think that means to start drooling while they're holding, <laughs> while they're holding the ball. Oh, God. So I say bounce the ball. That's better. So they bounce the ball. And I say, okay, um, I'm going to uh, use my psychic abilities to tell you that I believe you are right-handed. And they say, yeah. And I say, how did I do that? Well, uh, I bounced the ball. Yeah, you're gonna use your dominant arm. And so I said, well, wait a minute. If I had LeBron James here, if I had Larry Bird here and I threw him a ball, I would, I would have a 50-50 chance of guessing whether he was right-handed or left-handed. Hmm because uh, he has practiced bouncing with the subdominant arm enough times so that there's no difference. And so when people guard him, he can go either way, and they, they don't know ahead of time mm -hmm. which arm he's going to favor. So the real answer to changing who you are in the world is to log the bounces. So how do I bounce the ball equally with my left hand is right. You log enough bounces hmm. with the left hand so that it now rises up and matches how many times you've bounced there, and then you, you can go either way. So you're, you're reminding me of something else that I read from you this week. <clears throat> One of the emails you sent out to the creator group. And it was about, in the beginning of your coaching with, with Steve Hardison, he was asking you to do something that you weren't comfortable doing. And you said, I don't know if I can do that. And his response was, well, then don't be you. Be right. Bruce Lee or be someone who can. Exactly. Uh, uh, who, do you, who do you need to be um, to go talk to that intimida intimidating person who's going to hire training for the company? Who, who would you need to be? Yeah. Because what he wanted to show me was – not to show up inauthentically or artificially, but to reconnect me to my creative, infinite creative capacity to create anything and everything, and including who I'm being. Right. And right. So I get to choose that. And that is what you're saying is I get to choose who I'm. So it's not like the whole, that's just how I am. Well, I don't really, I don't really do that. <clears throat> well, okay, you can. I never right. have. I don't care. That's right? right. Like you can choose that. You can be different than you've always been. It's not how you are. Are you a fan of Bruce Lipton? Yes. Yeah. Well, he, uh, he you know, so his stuff is all about, you know, epigenetics, right? Yeah. Right. And, uh, and what, what's, how do you define, or how would you explain to somebody what epigenetics is? Cause I'm thinking of it here as we're speaking. Well, I wouldn't have a biologically valid, or intelligent way of explaining it, but it's kind of like neural pathways. They get developed and there's, um, for example, people who meditate, different parts of the brain come alive that weren't alive before. Yeah. And so the brain, the neuroplasticity of the human brain is a biological fact. And, um, and his work shows that um, you're not stuck with what you used to believe. You can create a new belief or a new direction or a, 
uh, a new commitment that you repeat in another direction and it, it becomes part of um, and get, get the bounces yeah that's right that's it you and change you, we change we not just change who we are we change our biology we change yes, our, and, nor, our, our neurology and he even talks about the possibility of changing our dna yep and the good thing about people like him and martin seligman who wrote learned optimism mm -hmm. and developed the whole field of positive psychology is that they've done the scientific backup to it yeah they've done the research right so that when you uh you're working with a skeptic who who says i'll never change uh, that's the way i am um you can you can talk about um that's just not biologically true right that's a superstition you're carrying yeah and um so so this coaching work is not just about uh some kind of pump people up make them feel good uh new age psychology and all that it really is about altering at a very fundamental level when coaching is done skillfully seeing that people can really alter who they're being in the world. Not just what they're doing. Right. What are some things that you want people to know about that you're up to? Like we've mentioned the creator group a few times. I also want you to, to talk about, um, so let's talk about the creator group and where people can go to learn about that or participate in that as well as the ACS, which, which when I participated was called coaching prosperity school does now, um, um, oh my God, what's the A stand? My goodness. Uh, advanced, advanced client, client systems, client systems and the whole, we upgraded the whole program, um, to emphasize the role of systems in people's lives. And I got that, um, from a client of mine in Phoenix, and he's created this amazing international company but his whole culture and philosophy is based on systems. Every system is perfect for the result it gets. Mm -hmm. So if you want a different result, put in a different system. What most people do is if they want a different, don't like the result they're getting, they blame other people. Yeah. And so company cultures uh, descend down to blame, office politics, gossip, sneaky um power plays because they don't understand what's missing is a system that you'll stand by so anyway uh the creator group is is a, a private group it's not open I'll, for just one second one second i'm sorry to interrupt you but i just want to what you just said don't do you have a recording or an audio somewhere out in the world on the systems i'll have to look because I know that I've listened to it. I don't know if it was an interview or something, but I've listened to it. I'm hearing this again, and it's really important. I, really, I want to share it with people, and I, I want to study it again. Okay, so everybody has a time management system they're using, whether they know it or not. And the system might be I wake up, and um, I see what I'm up against, and I, and, and I try to do what I can with it. Okay, that's your system. So what kind of result is that system getting you for managing your priorities right now if you want a different result open your mind to putting a different system in because yeah. that will every system is perfect mm -hmm. all systems are perfect for the result they get right. and um so that way inside his culture his name was steve sangi oh right now he's right down the street yeah he is uh if they weren't getting the right result with a sales team or with um, whatever, they would look at, they would all study the system that was in place. What system are we using to quality check or to get new customers? Instead of who's letting us down, who's not performing. Uh, so blame is the default uh, of a family and of a, that's the default system everyone goes to. And if you want to upgrade the system, it has to be consciously upgraded. 
and uh, people don't see that. All right, thank you. I'm going to see if I can find so, whatever it was, whether it was something, maybe some writing, or if it was an audio of yours, because you have so much content out there. And I really want to encourage <clears throat> uh, the audience to you know to Google you and to, to just go see because you've got so you're so prolific. You're more prolific than anyone I've ever met, and there's so much great content that you share in the world. Your footprint is everywhere. So I, I definitely encourage people to, to Google you and go surf around and find stuff and you're going to find what sticks for you because you've got content like on everything. So, so please do that. So, <clears throat> so where I recommend people go yeah. yes. if they haven't had any introduction is uh, the last two books uh, right now, which mm -hmm. is um, Waking up to the power of the present moment versus living in the future and living in the past. Um, and then the next book is called Creator. And um, that's about realizing how much creativity you have at your disposal that you knew you had when you were three years old. You know, three-year-olds just, they paint, they dance, they play they can do anything. My three-year-old grandson walks up to the stove and starts turning the knobs. I can cook. Let me cook this thing. And uh, so waking up to that. So those two things. Uh, the ACS is uh, not available. This is the last one. Right oh, now. no kidding. Oh, really? It's, oh, yeah. wow. Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, um, this is the final graduating class. <clears throat> cool. And, and the creator group is a closed group. So people, um, the, and, but the creator group was formed uh, by people who liked the book. So if you get the book, it costs you a lot less than uh, trying to get into the group. <laughs> I'm going to say three letters and you're going to tell me whether or not we're allowed to talk about it. MCO. Well, we can talk about it, but we're not going to be allowed to say what it is. Well, <laughs> well that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Let's sound, wait. Why don't we sounds, wait? It sounds really <laughs> annoying to me. <laughs> Why don't we wait then on that? We'll hold okay. off. I'll look forward to that. <clears throat> so uh, just to give a little context for the audience on what that is, is that I saw a post recently. You were here in Phoenix doing a coaching session with your lifetime coach Steve Hardison and you guys posted an image of you holding up a little whiteboard with the letters MCO just saying stay tuned so yeah you it was a nice teaser very effective teaser good work there guys so um I, I want to wrap it up by by acknowledging you I mentioned this a little bit in the introduction but um there's been no one in the world as influential with respect to the development of my um, profession and my ability to, to create affluence uh, and to build my practice as a speaker, I mean, as a coach and as well as a speaker, uh, as you. So I am constantly channeling you and I simply want to say thank you for the profound influence that you continue to have on me and that you continue to have on all the people that I serve. Well, I'm, I'm touched by that. Um, your affluence is um, a reflection of service, the service you provide. That's where it comes from. It doesn't come from me. And I learned that from you. Yeah. So thank you for that, my friend. And thank you for all the, the great wisdom and, and, uh, and value and offerings that you, you made here today uh, for the Tough Talks uh, tribe. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for the work you do. Appreciate Keep it, it up. Keep Thanks it up. All right. Talk soon. <laughs> so I've, I don't even know how many years I've known Steve. Like I mentioned in the conversation, I hired him on at least two occasions to coach me. And I've been to his schools. I've seen him speak numerous times and I've consumed so so much of his content, which is reading his books and watching his videos and listening to his audios. And every time, this time included, you know, there's great learning for me from him. And I, I just love that. So, you know, he, he is, I wasn't blowing smoke and I know you believe that. Um, 
I was so excited that he, he agreed to be a guest. I wasn't blowing smoke when I told him that he's one of the people that I channel versus compare. Uh, and I really legitimately do. I think back, I think the first time, it's funny, the very first time I ever saw Steve Chandler was when I saw him speaking at um, the Ritz-Carlton here in Phoenix. And I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> As I was taking notes, I love his sense of humor. I, he's sneaky freaking funny because he makes way more jokes than you could ever catch because he doesn't smile when he's making them. It's so, so sneaky and subtle and brilliant. I'm laughing my ass off and taking notes, and I think I was comparing. I'm like, oh, man, he's so much better than me. This dude's way better a speaker than me. However, that rapidly transformed into channeling. So, so many great takeaways, like deliberate inspiration, not waiting for something to happen to inspire you, choosing to create the context of your day, inspiring yourself, starting with the morning ritual, right, and going to active, to accessing your inspiration file, which is brilliant, you know, and, uh, and, and like I mentioned there, is uh, channeling people, uh, instead of comparing yourself to people that are doing stuff better than you, being pumped, pumped as hell about the fact that there are people out in the world, you know, crushing it at what you do way better than you. And that's such good news because that is just, it's fuel for you, right? If you'll see it that way. So that was a badass interview. I hope that you took uh, from it as, as much as I did. And, uh, and thanks for tuning in again. And, um, as always, uh, create miracles. Oh, by the way, uh, before I sign off, uh, I wanted to um, mention uh, my daily dose list. I don't know if, I just assume that people know about this because if you're in Tough Talks, then you also know about the daily dose, but I think that's a faulty assumption. I have a list where I send out every morning uh, a, a little nugget of mental toughness gold. It's called the Daily Dose Mental Toughness Tips in 30 Seconds or Less. So every, and that's all it is. It's, it, there's no announcements. There's no links. There's just, just a, in fact, here's, like, I made a book out of the first 365 of them here. So it's the, the first year. Some of them are super short. Some of them are a little bit longer, but they're all, unless you read really slow, then you can read them all. You can consume each of them in less than 30 seconds. So one Here's a really short one. Complaining releases neurotransmitters that make you stupid, period. <laughs> That's one. So anyway, uh, you get that when you sign up. Uh, sign up when you're at, at your home time zone, and that way at right around 6 a.m. every single morning of the year, you'll get one of those sent to your inbox. I encourage you to sign up for it. You can do that at ChristopherDoris.com slash DD. ChristopherDoris.com slash DD. All right, folks. See you next time. Create miracles.